troops. They cannot succeed without the support of the people. We cannot succeed without the support of our people. I am happy to see that the reaction throughout the country is favorable. I have received hundreds and hundreds of telegrams from all corners of the Philippines congratulating you and incidentally me for the proclamation of martial law, for the sudden cessation of anarchy and of criminality throughout the land and uh, of uh, the uh, re-establishment re of an atmosphere of brotherhood amongst Filipinos. Now everybody seems concerned about his neighbor. Now everybody seems to be involved in the destiny, not only of himself, but of the entire country and of the entire nation. And this is what we have been hoping and praying for. I repeat, it is necessary to reform in order to attain the uh, victory that we uh, seek. It is necessary that uh, we um, uh, attain all the objectives that we have set. These objectives are, we must give to the poorest man whatever is his due. The rich man must now understand that this is a new kind of society. We will protect his rights. For whether he is rich or poor, he has rights. And uh, those rights are as sacrosanct as the right of uh, the military to uh, dignity and uh, to uh, a um, uh, reputation and a standard of proficiency to which he is entitled. Thus it is uh, important that uh, we must uh, tell everybody, and uh, I ask you to do this, to go out uh, to uh, your assignments, to your respective areas, to your units, to your uh, area of operations, and tell everyone that every citizen in this country has rights and those rights will be protected, whether he is a businessman or a mere janitor, whether he is a tenant or a landowner. Those rights should be protected, but we will treat each other as brothers. The landlord must now learn to live with the tenant, and the tenant must be given his due. I am proclaiming today land reform throughout the entire Philippines. We must allow the tenant to uh, now acquire ownership ultimately of his uh, land, but he must engage in cooperative effort. We cannot uh, just keep on subdividing land, we must cooperate. We must now establish cooperatives of production, cooperatives in irrigation, cooperatives in rural electricity, cooperatives in consumption, cooperatives in everything that we do because we are a small nation and most of our people are small people. At the same time, we will protect business. We will protect investment, but not to the extent that business and investment will dominate the entire scene, dominate the Philippines, and that they shall dictate and rule the country. No. The business uh, section need no fear whatsoever. As I have said, the soldier is not only courageous, he is not only humble, he is fair. Because that is his standard of not only living, but his standard for performance. That is his very life, that is his very meaning of his being a soldier. Fairness and justice. And uh, so you tell each and everybody that uh, they can expect fairness, justice. We will uh, reform our society so we will weed out the corrupt in our government. We must do so because a corrupt government is uh, an insult to the entire country. And it encourages rebellion, it encourages revolution. There can be no success, no victory, no achievement if we do not alter and change our political institutions so as to be able to remove the sterile and obstruct the attainment of the ideal that we have. The um, armed forces of the uh, Philippines have set up a standard of their own. I know that you are engaged in cleaning up your own ranks. You are policing your own ranks. The Secretary of National Defense, the Chief of Staff, have recommended, the major service commanders have recommended that we now establish a military commission to investigate, try and punish all personnel of the armed forces of the Philippines who may not perform in accordance with the exact standards, uh, exacting standards of proficiency of the professional soldier. Because of this,
never happened uh, in the uh, past. I repeat, I have complete faith and 